Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. So the Liberal Party has announced that they have more amendments that they want to add to Bill C-21, which is their bill to say, hey, let's try to cut down on crime by going after the people who aren't committing the crimes. Yeah, um, surely this could have nothing to do with their continuing struggles for credibility on issues like ethics and the economy and so forth, but they really want to be seen as the gun party because it's really the only place where they think that they've got any traction left. Yay! Um, so there's a whole bunch of things, as mentioned, that they want to add on to this that they've just been thinking of, and this comes right after they sort of had to retreat on some previous um, some previous attempts to ban a whole bunch of stuff. Now, I'm not going to go over their press conference or all of that. I want to look at the actual text of the amendments that they want to put through. And we've only got some of those right now. There's going to be more released over time. And as we do, we'll go over those too. But we're going to start with what we've got. All right, so let's have a look at the sort of new text that we've got here and we'll discuss it. Now, I know you're going to be saying, hey, Runkle, um, you've never seen a thing that the Liberal Party has done that you liked. And that's not true. And... I'm just going to tell you, there's actually some things in here that I think are not a bad idea, along with a bunch of gr bunch of junk. So uh, we'll uh, we'll have a look. All right. So first thing that they want to do is amend the definition of a prohibition order. And a prohibition order is basically an order to ban people from having firearms or other things, because a an order that bans you from having firearms also covers um, crossbows for some reason. Um, there's not a lot of crossbow crime. I mean, it's happened, but it's not super common, but it also covers ammunition and so forth. The thing that they want to add in here though, is firearm part. And so firearm part, they're going to give a specified definition. So you see here when they've got prohibition order means an order made under this act or any other act of parliament protect, uh, prohibiting a person from possessing any firearm, etc., etc. The new bit is firearm part. That's what they're looking to, um, to add. Now, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit in this definition here because they note that they're adding a definition here. And that's, um, we're going to sort of jump ahead and we'll come back to things, but firearm part means a barrel for a firearm, a slide for a handgun, and any other prescribed part, which they'll be able to do by regulation later. So watch for that. But does not include, unless otherwise prescribed, a barrel for a firearm or a slide for a handgun if that barrel or slide is designed exclusively for use on a firearm that is deemed under subsection 84 sub 3 not to be a firearm. So essentially, this means barrels and slides at the moment and they might come back with other things that they want to add, but doesn't include ones that are for air guns or t-shirt cannons or nail guns or any of those things. So um, I don't hate this. And what I mean by that is that um, if you are banned from having guns because you're a criminal, I don't really see that it's a big deal to ban somebody from having, you know, that you say you can't have a gun barrel or a slide. And so that's an attempt at dealing with sort of ghost guns or 3D printed guns. And this one actually makes some sense. It's better than what they were trying to do before, like banning, um, you know, digital files, information. I, I don't hate this. Um, so that's um, perhaps going to surprise some people. But uh, this shouldn't affect the ordinary person. It just says, hey, um, if you can't have a gun, you can't have the critical parts to make a gun. Makes sense to me. All right. Now, they also want to add in a part of the definition of prohibited firearms. This is essentially a new ban. They want to ban this new uh, classification. And that is any unlawfully manufactured firearm, regardless of the means or method of manufacture. So this basically means anything that was made illegally. So any sort of ghost gun or whatever. Um, now, the problem is, is that there's a lot of homemade guns out there that have been made legally. And 
it's going to be really difficult to determine just from looking at a firearm if it was manufactured legally or illegally because there's, you know, there's ways to make various guns legally. Um, theoretically, if you get a business firearms license to allow you to manufacture firearms, you could make something like a pipe shotgun, which is going to look like an unlawfully manufactured firearm. So this one, I think, is going to have some substantial issues with regards to how do you prove this in court. Um, yeah, it's going to create some headaches. Uh, the easiest way for them to prove it, of course, will be if they get somebody to confess, which is, again, a reminder that talking to police is um, a bad idea. Now, there's also some elements to this section which are just... Um, provisions for when it comes into force, when it actually becomes law. And so they note that um, some of these provisions come into force on a date fixed by the by a, an order in council, and others come into force 30 days after Bill C-21 becomes law, if it ever does, and we hope it does not. So that's the, uh, that's the starting point on this one. All right. Now, they've got another provision here that we'll look at, and this is a five-year... Uh, statutory review. So this these provisions have to come back uh, into the House of Commons to be looked at again. Review by House of Commons Committee. Five years after the day on which paragraph E of the definition of uh, prohibited firearm in subsection 84 sub 1 of the Criminal Code as enacted by section 1.1 comes into force, a comprehensive review of that paragraph is to be commenced uh, by a committee of the House of Commons that may be designated or established by that House for that purpose. And of course, that committee is almost certain to be stacked with anti-gun lobbyists. And uh, within one year or any further time that is authorized, uh, they have to submit a report on that review to the House of Commons together with a statement of any changes they want to make to paragraph E. Now, remember, we're just, paragraph E is that section that they just added. So paragraph E is this any unlawfully manufactured firearm, regardless of the means or method of manufacture. I'm not sure why that definition would need a lot of tinkering. I suspect that what they're planning here is that they will add a whole bunch of shopping list of guns that they want to ban, but we don't know for certain. Um, this is phrased in a weird way, which um, when governments phrase things in a weird way in a piece of highly contentious legislation, it often makes me wonder if they're doing something sneaky because often they are. So yeah. All right. Let's look at another provision here now. And this one is um, definitely something that is being done um, that is sneaky and just purely for marketing reasons. And that is this clause here. This is the non-derogation clause. And I'll explain what it does. And I'll also talk about sort of what it's actually for. So, rights of indigenous people. The provisions enacted by this act are to be construed as upholding the aboriginal and treaty rights of indigenous peoples recognized and affirmed by section 35 of the Constitution Act and not as abrogating or derogating from them. And they say for the purposes of this, indigenous peoples has the same meaning as elsewhere in the law. Okay, cool. Um what does this do? Uh, precisely nothing because this is true of all laws in Canada. Um, if you, if we're talking about something where uh, people have a charter right to something, then every law is only in effect to the extent that that charter right applies. So this is saying, hey, um, the charter still exists. Cool. Um, the reason why they put this in is that they've been getting a tremendous amount of criticism, which is very justified, and it's been coming from various groups, um, especially indigenous groups themselves, have been criticizing the government for a lack of consultation and for a fact that these gun bans and various other plans, like red flag laws, um, will harm indigenous people and will be used against them in various ways. So um, what they're going to say is, no, 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 we put in this section here. This section says we're not violating your rights, which is about as useful as, you know, you walk in on your partner and they go, this isn't what it looks like, as they're in the middle of doing exactly what it looks like. Yeah, 
Um, if you walk into your house and you see a guy walking out with your TV and he's like, hey, I'm not robbing the place, that statement is meaningless. Um, this here is just purely for public relations. It has no actual effect and it is entirely just so that they can um, engage in some misinformation and say, no, 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 it doesn't interfere with the rights of indigenous people. We said it doesn't. So that's how that works, right? Um, yeah, this is actually something that should offend people because this is straight up BSing about the rights of indigenous Canadians. Yep. Okay. Um, so yeah. So the next section we're going to look at is this bit right here. So, and this is a big sweeping addition to the gun bans. So that Bill C-21 in Clause 1 be amended by adding to the definition of prohibited firearm. Uh, so they're striking out or and adding an or and, you know, readjusting just to fit this in. But they're adding this. Um, a firearm that is not a handgun and that discharges center fire ammunition in a semi-automatic manner was originally designed with a detachable cartridge magazine with a capacity of six cartridges or more and is designed and manufactured on or after the day on which this paragraph comes into force. Now, this one is going to be interesting. This is the one where people are saying, oh, they're letting us keep all the guns we already have. Um, that's not true. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, so, but basically this is planning to ban any rifle that comes, you know, that is designed after this, that was originally designed with a detachable cartridge magazine with a capacity of six cartridges or more. So what we may see is some Canadian designs that come originally with a five round magazine. I don't know what this is for other than just to really, it's going to restrict uh, a lot of the firearms available on the Canadian market, but it's not actually going to, I mean, this is pure marketing in a lot of ways. But um, that isn't to say that it isn't going to be incredibly harmful to Canadian gun owners because it basically recognizes that these guns can be used for hunting or sport, but really it's going to shut them out of the Canadian marketplace just because these firearms were designed in the States for different legal criteria. Um, that's that's silly, right? To just design it based on saying, hey, somewhere else that the law allows this, they had more, you know, more magazine capacity. Um, it prevents the use of very common magazine styles because there's certain styles of magazine that are uh, used in multiple different firearms just for standardization. Um, and it's already illegal to have these center fire magazines um, that hold more than five cartridges for a semi-automatic rifle that fires center fire ammunition. So, yeah. Now, keep in mind, remember we had that five-year statutory review? Well, this is something that they're also proposing that they can review in five years. So all of the guns that they decide that they haven't banned yet, they're saying we're going to do it in five years. Um, cool. And... So if you're saying, oh, they're letting us keep all the things we already have, um, guess what they're going to do in five years, folks? Yeah, um, just just saying this, again, is some uh, some trickery. They want to, you know, say, oh, well, it's a, it's OK. We got this in. And then they're going to say, oh, well, our totally neutral uh, committee that we totally handpicked and stacked with our own um sort of people who we know what they're gonna say say that we have to take that away from you oh so sad right um so this is the trick now something interesting was pointed out to me on twitter and i don't really want to call out the person's name but um because i don't sort of have permission for that but it points out that they also define semi-automatic which is interesting. Semi-automatic in respect of a firearm means a firearm that is equipped with a mechanism that, following the discharge of a cartridge, automatically operates to complete any part of the reloading cycle necessary to prepare for the discharge of the next cartridge. Now, normally, I mean, this is a more expansive definition of semi-automatic than what I think of as the definition of semi-automatic. 
because it was pointed out that there are some pump action shotguns that when you fire them, um, use some of the recoil or some of that energy to, you know, open, <laughs> you know, open up the action and so forth, which is a step. So I don't really know here. This seems like it could capture a number of firearms that in fact are not semi-automatic, but just have some sort of convenience feature. So yeah, um, but this will ban a whole lot of stuff. Um, and when they say designed and manufactured on or after the day, it'll be really interesting to see how that gets interpreted by the courts. Because let's say um, the Tavor X95, um, that was designed a while ago because it's a gun that already exists. And a bunch of them have already been manufactured after the day on, you know, this whole, or sorry, before the day. So the question now is, you know, designed and manufactured on, does it have to be both? It reads like it has to be both. So it reads like any design that currently exists should be fine, but I'm betting the courts are going to take a different approach to that even though it doesn't seem to be the, the proper approach, but we'll see. Um, as I said, you know, I suspect um, we may also see that get changed with their five-year review to say is designed or manufactured. At which point that bans a whole lot more stuff, right? Um, now, everybody's saying, oh, well, they're gonna let us keep all this stuff. Isn't that fantastic? Um, you know, they still got the power to use orders in council, right? They're still planning on banning all the stuff that you saw in that big shopping list from the amendments that got rejected. They haven't given up on that. They're still going to come back and try to do that. So this is not, I've seen some people basically celebrating and saying, oh, well, at least I'll get to keep what's mine. Well, don't plan on it. Um, there's nothing to celebrate in this. All right. Now we're just going to really briefly talk about some of the other stuff we've got here. As I said, we don't have all the stuff. Um, there's some stuff on magazine restrictions. I don't have that yet. And as soon as I do, I'll be talking about it because I've got some, some opinions on what they've sort of suggested it'll be. But until I actually see the text, I don't want to sort of commit to, being angry about text, I don't know what it is yet. I I feel like that's reasonable. But um, transitional provisions, this just basically says that if you have been, if, there, if you're currently facing a case uh, with respect to an unlawfully manufactured firearm and this section comes into force, um, it doesn't change that gun to a prohibited firearm if it wasn't already. Um, so this is just for people who are currently caught up in the system. All this is, is, you know, as it says, a transitional provision, something to help smooth the way from, through a legislative change. Not a big deal. It just is what it is. Um, very few people, if any, will actually be affected by this. Uh, the next bit is the coming into force aspect. And uh, it notes that uh, basically some of these provisions come into a force... Um, when there's an order in council and some of them come into force 30 days after the law gets passed. Um, not a big deal. This is just timing of provisions. All right. So that's um, sort of what we've had released so far. Um, as I said, it's not all bad. It includes one change that I think is actually kind of sensible which surprises me because our government so far has really not nailed a lot of, you know, sensible things there. Um, that said, most of this, most of these new amendments are bad and we mustn't forget that um, Bill C-21, the base Bill C-21 without any of the amendments includes a lot of terrible things like that it'll basically prevent you from meaningfully challenging it if the CFO wants to take your gun license. That's a problem. We should have, you know, proper due process on that. Um, it'll also prevent, or it'll also create a swatting provision to allow you to essentially send a tactical team to the house of somebody you don't like 
whether or not they're actually a gun owner. So um, if you don't like the police kicking down your door and putting a rifle to your head and shooting your dog, then maybe Bill C-21 is not the bill for you. But um, yeah, so the base Bill C-21 is awful. Um, the good part of this, even if they threw out all the other bad amendments, would not be enough to save Bill C-21. Um, there are some provisions here that I would like to see a more sensible government put in place in a better law, but most of this is just is just awful. Now, it's interesting to note, um, various gun banning groups are also not pleased with this, so we're going to see some interesting things. Um, I, I don't know where this is going at this point, but we will have to do some further uh, discussion, some further analysis, because as I mentioned, there's more to come. And in particular, there's some magazine restrictions that I really want to see what the uh, the text of, or what the text is. So thank you guys for watching this one. I hope you found it to be interesting and educational and depressing. It is what it is. Um, please like this video, share it with your friends, hit all the buttons down there. Well, except that thumbs down button. We'll stay away from that one. But all the other buttons are good. Uh, they really do help the channel and I appreciate it. Uh, I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, the CCFR, Canada's National Firearms Association, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association, at the $30 level, Sights and Arms Limited, and Jane, Babe, and Luxor, and at the $20 level, uh, uh, Lindsay Metcalf, Kyle Fox, Haywire, Gerald to the Bailey, Cameron Johnson, Andrew Welsich, Vicky, and Brigitte uh, Edrup. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this has armed you with knowledge. See you next time.